as we have been talking about communications of dreams um, in our previous lesson, we went on further to look at the interpretations that happened when Joseph um, was with the butler and the wine bearer. And there are a few things that we explained that we'll recap as we get on in depth looking at um, other few dreams before we get into practical things that are of uh, daily and get also to interpret certain dreams. So when you read your Bible um, in, 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 in Genesis chapter number 40, when you take your Bible in Genesis chapter number 40, the Bible explains to us on the aspect of how Joseph interpreted that dream of the butler and uh, the wine bearer. And I explained certain things that I'm going also to come to a place where I will enlighten to us and go in also so that if you missed our previous lesson, you can get uh, the recap of this. One of the things that you have to understand uh, that I explained is that, um, all right, all right, so we are looking at uh, Genesis, all right? We are looking at Genesis chapter number 40. We are looking at Genesis chapter number 40, and um, I explained to us um, this is where Joseph interpreted the wine beer and the butler we interpreted the wine beer and the butler and I explained to us um, on this aspect that you would see that even when the wine beer and the butler dreamt the Bible tells us that the wine beer the, the wine beer up dreamt the cup and the wine and the butler dreamt the bread and the beds and I explained to us that God speaks uh, to us in familiar I explained that God speaks to us all right God speaks to us in familiar language all right so this is why you see that as we are going to be going into the next lesson we are going to be getting to join up different things that are practical as in colors features and all and showing us how you can get to a place through discernment um in the precedent room so god speaks to us in most cases um to us in familiar language all right which is things that you understand and things that you know so you will see that um the the wine the wine beer all right the wine beer you see that when he dreamt the bible tells us that he dreamt um he dreamt the wine he dreamt the cup all right because he was the wine beer all right and uh the, the third thing he dreamt uh, is what his job, which was being a wine bearer. So God would speak in a language that is familiar to him. There is no way God would not speak in a familiar language, which confuses many people because sometimes you would see that on this familiar language, many people now, they would dream maybe people they know or even themselves so they get to try to understand same was the man who was um, a baker all right so you would see that the baker when you read um on the baker the baker uh dreamt cakes like someone who's here who bakes cakes um they baked cakes they they dreamt uh they dreamt beds which was odd all right eating 
other food that was on his head all right so the cakes were not ate and uh, that was his job then also a dream standing in front of the king so this is what happens uh, in most times what you will need is for you to have sort of like discernment for you to be able to capture and to understand when god speaks i want you to rush with your bible to the book of um genesis chapter number 41 all right we are starting now in genesis chapter number 41 in genesis chapter number 41 all right in genesis 41 genesis 41 which i believe we'll be getting to understand um uh, we'll be getting to understand pharaoh's uh, dream we'll be getting to understand um pharaoh's dream the bible says now it happened at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamt that he was standing by now he was standing by the now and lo there came up there came up out of the now seven healthy cows sleek and handsome and fat and they grazed in the reed grass in the mossy pastures and behold the seven cows all right behold the seven cows came up from the nile ugly and gunted and raw boned and stood and stood um, by the fat cows at the bank of the nile and the ugly gunted and bony cows ate the sleek ones and the fat ones then he woke up so pharaoh dreamt two dreams that we are going to 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 break down all right he dreamt two dreams that we are going to break down so that you understand the similarity uh that um happened on pharaoh when he dreamt the dream all right so i believe the first thing that you would understand is um All right, so there is Pharaoh's first dream, the first dream that uh, he dreamt as Pharaoh. The Bible tells us that he was, the Bible tells us if you, you will find it in, um, you will find it in Genesis chapter number what? Number 41, all right? You will find it in Genesis chapter number 41 so the bible says that the very same dream that he dreamt uh the very same dream that he dreamt uh pharaoh dreamt seven cows that came that came um out of the nile all right so he dreamt seven cows all right seven cows that came out from the nile um so seven cows out of the Nile River. Seven cows came out of the Nile River and the Bible says that they stood by also seven fat cows. All right, they stood close to where there was um, close to where there was seven fat cows. All right, so that's so you'd see that um, it was that the these seven that these seven that were fat. All right, all right, so seven slim at the fat all right the seven slim at the seven that were fat so the seven cows that were slim they consumed the seven ones that were fat 
all right and the bible says that pharaoh then came to a place um that he he woke up from that dream and joseph now had to come to a place where he had to interpret this aspect of um the, the dream so we have to look at the similarities of what is it that what came into the dream what are the things that um pharaoh dreamt the the, the first thing that you would see The first thing that you would see um, is that he dreamed cows, all right? He dreamed what? Cows. He dreamed cows, all right? That is the first thing that you see right there the second thing that you see we are told about the what the river nile all right we are told about the river now these are things that you have to really look at specifically these are the two things that are familiar besides the slim cows and uh and uh, the fat cows all right so he dreamed cows and we all understand uh when we talk about cows that specifically a cow is made up of um is made up of three things all right a cow is made up of two of of three things um that can make an economy all right so we have meat we have milk and we have skin all right we have milk we have, and we have skin which makes up what we call an economy all right which makes up which makes up an economy all right so this makes up an economy so when he dreamt of now now is used basically the main use of the river now all right was uh to water agriculture that was the main use of uh that river its main use was specifically so that they can water agriculture and all the seeds that come out of um, the aspect of agriculture so that was the main use of uh, of the cows right there so when joseph begins to interpret the interpretation of that dream we find it on uh the very same chapter all right we find it on Uh, on we find it on Genesis chapter number 41 all right from verse number what from verse number 17 all right so the first thing is the Bible tells us that Pharaoh was standing by the bank Pharaoh was standing by the bank all right Pharaoh was standing by the bank and in the interpretation of any man in most of the dreams standing by the bank all right so let's use those words standing by the river bank all right standing by the river bank all right so in most cases when a person is standing by the river bank it is symbolic of um of uh the other side is standing by the river bank it's symbolic that the other side of um the river is another season another level all right so we can just conclude to say um the symbolic of that is that the other side is another level all 
all right another level you can bring it to say the other side is another season all right the other side is another level or it is another season so in many times when we see people dreaming dreams where they are standing by the river and while least while they are standing by the river they are waiting to cross in most of the times when people do not cross that river in that aspect when you wake up you are told ah the dream that you dreamt it means that you uh you were supposed to see yourself on the other level or something where you you were supposed to cross maybe from danger into safety but you could not all right so he was standing by the river meaning there was another season or there was another kind of an atmosphere that was to come and in this case it was another season and while you are standing the lord began to show him and this dream specifically one of the things is it it had a redo though it had things that were familiar to them it had a redo and remember according to most of the dreams that would come to these guys who were pharaohs most of the dream they would dream god would make sure that in these dreams there are things that um familiar whereby especially the gods they worship like at river nile they used it to water the, the the agriculture and also they used it for rituals that river so he was standing there on the ancient river that is more special in his nation so if you read on verse 17 of verse 41 the bible says so joseph said uh to so pharaoh said to joseph in my dream i was standing by the river bank and uh, I saw seven sleek, seven fat and handsome cows uh, at the river, and they grazed at the reeds and the marshy pasture. And lo, seven ugly ones uh, that were wherever that they came, uh, came out. He said, I've never seen this in these lands, and this ugly came out and eat. Um, came out and eat the seven cows so it means they were devoured the cows that were the cows that were fed they were devoured with the cows that were that were slim which is unheard of and remember um after after that i believe joseph had to 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 to, to speak to him verse 21 and yet when they devoured them it could not be detected that they've ate anything because they were still thin and emaciated as before. All right. Then I woke up, but also I slept again. So we, we were still talking about the first. Uh, we were still talking about uh, the first dream. All right. We were still talking about the first dream. So Joseph spoke to him. Um, Joseph spoke to him and said, "The seven good cows are seven years of good um, of good years, and the seven of good years, and the seven that you dreamt, seven cows are the seven of drought." So look at the sim sim symbolism right there. I want you to look at the si symbolism right there. All right, look at the symbolism right there. Praise God. Look at the symbolism right there. Seven fat cows. Set cows. symbolize seven years of um, good life all right and the seventeen cows symbolize seven years of 
drought. Symbolize seven years of drought. So when you would look, you'd realize that we, we spoke about two things. We spoke about these are all cows, the fat ones, the thin ones. And the interpretation of what is about to happen specifically is coming from the thinness of the cows. All right. It is coming from the thinness of the cows. So the number, the, the, there you would see that it's not only about the cows, even the number symbolized something. The number, the number of the cows symbol, symbolized what was different, all right, numerically. So numbers are also important when it comes to dreams and also the atmosphere. All oh, right, so they were on a river, meaning that the river waters the economy. So there was going to be something that was that would happen. Though I believe Pharaoh did not really put into detail the aspect of what happened to the river. But the Bible tells us specifically that the thin cows never grew fat. All right, so that was about the cows, and we will proceed to look at uh, the other the other aspect. Uh, the second dream that Pharaoh dreamt so that I can explain to us well, all right? The second dream that Pharaoh had, praise God. All right. What was Pharaoh's second dream? There we go. All right, so, so we, we, we then come to a place of uh, understanding, something that is uh, phenomenal right there. We then come to a place of, um, of understanding. I want you to really look on, uh, I want you to really look on, on the second dream. The Bible says, and he fell and he fell asleep and dreamed the second time seven years of grain, seven years of grain, and came up as came up a single stalk and pump of good. Then behold, all right, the grain they were thin and dried and yeast and sprout again, and the seven years of uh, the seven pulp years, and he woke up again. So here he dreamt two kinds of grain. There was seven grain and there was seven um there was seven there were there were seven little ones or there were seven thin also grains. So these were the, the, the major these were the major economies that um Pharaoh had. These were the major economies that Pharaoh was dealing with in his nation. So you have to understand that um while we are dealing with Where we're dealing with symbols in dreams, uh, you have to understand that we, as far as Pharaoh is concerned, we saw things that uh, things that came out that were of factor, all right? That were of uh, of factor. Um, we saw numbers being mentioned. We saw numbers being mentioned in this dream. Um, we saw means of economy. We saw means of economy being mentioned, um, being mentioned in this uh, in this dream. We saw also not just means of economy. We saw also. Um, a situ all right we saw also situ being mentioned right there when i say situ i'm trying to talk about uh, environment environment being mentioned and all this when you realize that they con the all these, they are uh, 
were pillars Egypt economy. All these were pillars of Egypt economy. We had left also there was wheat. There was wheat grains that he saw. And all these were are pillars of the Egypt economy. And the dream is, is not coming to anybody. It is coming to somebody who is familiar, all right? It's coming to Pharaoh, who is a king, and he has power to control the economy. Remember, he's a king, all right? So you would see that um, the dream comes to Pharaoh because number one he is king alright number one he is king why is he king alright he has power over the nation so if there is any decision that is to be made pharaoh was the best person to go with imagine if if this dream is given to someone who they have no power to to, to even detect anything in the economy it wasn't going to be of any value so the dream is coming to pharaoh because uh, he is king all right he has power to over the nation uh he has power over the nation all right um, power to appoint leadership because in every crisis what is needed the most is best leadership so God brings the dream to Pharaoh and there is something that is symbolic that um, I, I saw right there that I believe we should look at all right, he, he, he saw numbers because Pharaoh was a king. All right, he saw numbers because we have to put it to mind that the reason why he saw numbers is because he was educated. Imagine seeing numbers and you don't understand numbers means of economies because he has been controlling economy for long as a king all right as a what as a king and remember that is what makes you to 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 rule over people environment this was a river and why the river all right we are talking about irrigation so specifically uh we saw the wheat in which this is um this this was measured in those days because it's the one that would make bread all right and even now in our days when the price of bread goes up it means everything has gone up so he had to see all these things um because they were symbolic specifically to the economy all right they were symbolic specifically to the economy They were symbolic specifically to the economy. So imagine if it is you. I believe there are a lot of dreams that God brings to you, and these dreams resemble certain meanings. Pharaoh had these dreams and they had meanings. All right. There were numbers. There was there were there was numeric numbers that he dreamt that were in those dreams. There there was not just numbers, there was an there was an aspect of um He did not just dream numbers, all right? Pharaoh did not just dream numbers. He did not just dream numbers, all right? It was not just numbers that he dreamt. It was not just numbers. He also dreamt means of economy that we have put right here, where he dreamt the wheat and he dreamt uh, the cows, all right? Which represented uh, the aspect of the economy, the situ the environment. 
Many people, you dream most of these things in your dream, but most of the times you ignore them because you do not really understand the significance. Why would God come to a place where he specifically brings to you things that are things that are that tangible? Some of you, you don't, you, you don't dream, you don't dream maybe the river. Some of you, you dream school. Some of you, you dream at your workplace. Some of you, when you are maybe a man of God, you dream yourself in a place where many people are gathered and you are ministering. All right? And you are ministering. Sometimes even the, there is the color of, of the, the colors are important. Um, even the people that are in those venues, they are important. So understanding in most cases all these details we will help you to understand how God communicates because it's not on every time when God will communicate to you through through things that are straight. Sometimes he speaks in riddles. It is also in the Bible um, where the Bible tells us that uh, I speak in, in riddles, all right? God tells them, I speak in riddles. All right, he was talking about the prophets. If, if, if you read your Bible in the book of uh, Numbers, Numbers chapter number 12, all right, if you read your Bible in the book of Numbers chapter number 12 from verse 8, the Bible says that to your prophets I speak to them through visions and dreams, all right, with him I speak to him face to face clearly with not in riddles, but he sees the form of, of, of me as the Lord. So sometimes it's showing you that if God speaks, saying that to, to, to Moses, to, to your prophets, um, to your prophets I speak to them through visions and dreams, but to Moses I speak to him face to face without riddles, it shows you that in most of the times, sometimes when God communicates to people through visions and dreams, all right, Sometimes when God communicates to people through visions and dreams, there are redos that come. And we know redos have to be solved, right? You have to solve a redo. I, I think that is one of the reasons why many people find it difficult to understand certain messages that come through, uh, that come through the communication of dreams. All right? So I want you to go and read that scripture um, uh, in numbers, all right? In numbers chapter number 12 from verse 8. Just go and read the whole chapter. So God said, um, I, I do not speak to Moses through visions and dreams, but I speak to your prophets through visions and dreams. So um, prophets, prophets, uh, when God speaks to them, he speaks to them through visions, visions, and dreams. God speaks to them through visions and dreams. But he goes on to, to say that to Moses, I speak to him face to face, not in riddles. So you would see that these visions and dreams, in most cases, what makes them difficult is that there is a language of redos. All right? Sometimes there are redos in this, uh, in this communication which needs one to come to a place where now they operate in what? Interpretation. Which will need you to, to be able or to have the ability to interpret. All right, to have the ability to interpret. If now you cannot interpret this vision or this dream, you will see yourself, you will see yourself uh, operating in error or have being confused. Why? Because this issue of redos is concerned. The issue of redos is concerned. I believe that you have got an understanding right there. So in our next uh Lesson will be going to a place where we will be explaining certain dreams and will be bringing in a lot of examples of uh, 
dreams that you might uh, have come through and certain i'll be bringing in certain interpretations of dreams that you have interpreted and also make you to understand how do you discern the difference because there are certain dreams that you have dreamt one thing but they are meaning two different things it might be one dream meaning two different things i believe um we have gone right there all right so